As expected, it's me again, Phil from Radio.co. I'm back with another basic guide to help you launch your very own dream radio station in no time at all. In this third instalment of the series, I'll be discussing what happens when you combine the equipment of episode two with the software of episode one live broadcasting, or rather, how can everything I say and play through this be heard in real time by my adoring fans? Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars, and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon. Now, as well as building an infinite number of automated playlists containing pre-recorded material, the Radio.co platform will actually allow you to broadcast live as much as you could possibly want, uh, which can be achieved at the very least by merely plugging in a USB microphone, such as this, and using a piece of free software called an encoder to simply connect you to your live Radio.co server. Once it displays on air on your dashboard, you can be heard all over the world, being mindful, I guess, of what you're saying and doing at all times, of course. Uh, now, there are a huge number of ways that you can actually broadcast your live audio over the internet, each catering for different preferences and work styles, such as, you know, simple encoders, as I mentioned, physical mixing desks, and even virtual DJ decks and mixers. I'm not going to go through all of them, of course, or give you a really in-depth how-to in regards to how to use them. I'm just going to give you an overview of basic options that are available to you to help you get started. So the first one I'm going to cover is just simply connecting physical equipment, with, with this being the example here, this Rode NT-USB Mini. Uh, now, this works just by purely being plugged into my computer via a regular USB cable. Uh, the computer will make a little computer sound and it's recognized, ready to work. Uh, USB microphones are really great and USB kit in general is great because it often doesn't require any additional downloads or updates or anything else to, well, to operate. It just plugs in and away you go. Now, once it's plugged in, of course, it still needs something extra so people can actually hear what you're saying. It will work, of course, but people can't hear you. And what you'll need for that is a piece of software, as I mentioned already, called an encoder. Uh, or, or a broadcaster can be another name for it. Now, all that software does is it's, it's think of it like a middleman. Uh, it's just plugging you into the server. You use that to hook you up so people can hear you. So within this piece of software, you just confirm what it is you're using and which user is using it. A lot of using uh, there. Um, and it all it is, and once it recognizes those answers, it will then project you out across to your audience. Now, there are two available that we generally um, like to, to talk about. Uh, one of them is one that we've created, one called the Radio.co Broadcaster Tool for Windows. Catchy short name, I know. Um, but that's just a piece of software we've made, an encoder exclusively for Windows devices that you can download purely from your um from your dashboard if you are logging in from a Windows device. Um, within that, you will be able to open it up, download it, of course, open it up, use your radio.co login details, and within there, it will connect directly to your radio.co account. Uh, if you have multiple stations, there will be a drop-down option for you to select which one you want to work on. And once you've opened it up, you will see... Well, just a very simple screen showing you, you know, the name of your station. Levels might be going if you've unmuted your microphone. But that's not, you know, that's, you've loaded it up, but you've actually not connected as yet. So people can't still hear what you're saying. What you need to do is go on the settings, which is usually three little dots at the top right of the screen. And from there, this is where you choose your broadcasting options. So there are, is going to be a separate option for music input. So if you're using something separately for your music, select what it is. There's also going to be a microphone input to choose that. And it will recognize everything that's plugged into your computer at that time, be it microphone or desk or something like that. Um, once you've chosen those ideas, there is also an auto duck as well, which will automatically kick in and die the music down a little bit if you are talking over the top. But once you've chosen your input settings, that's almost it ready to go. You just need to unmute your microphone so you can see those levels moving. And then just the final button on that page will just say connect. Clicking that will see you connected on air ready to rock and roll. Um, now, there is something, uh, two options for Radio.co users. If you are the owner of the account, so the person that's actually set it up, there's a feature called Live Anytime. And if you turn that on, that means you as the owner, you can go live anytime you like, as, as the name suggests. Uh, it just means you don't need to schedule yourself. So you want to go live without anyone telling you to, or you're the only one who uh, you know does anything on the station, or you want to cover some breaking news or something like that, an emergency broadcast, 
you can connect without having to schedule yourself. Anyone else, however, does need to be scheduled so the software knows who should have the ability to go live. So because you can give people remote access to your station, but it still protects it so people can't just, for lack of a better word, hijack the station and go live when they shouldn't be. So it protects you as the station owner. Um, when you're scheduling a live event, you will choose the specific host that you want to go live. And there we go. Once you've connected using the broadcaster tool, um, it will recognize it and, hey, presto, you're live on air, or rather, the person that should be live on air is live on air. Hey you, yes you, did you know you could start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today. Um, similarly, there is another option, particularly if you are a Mac user, because as I said, that broadcasting tool is exclusively for Windows. There's an option called BUTT, B-U-T-T, -T, or Broadcast Using This Tool, as it stands for. And that works in the exact same way. It's just an encoder, but it works on uh, across both Mac and um, and uh, Windows devices. And again, within that, you will select the specific audio input that you want to use. Again, whether it's a microphone desk or something in between, select that option. You can choose within Radio.co which station you are managing. Because again, it uses your login in details to pull your Radio.co stations. And in the exact same fashion, you can see your levels once you've chosen that input. Click on the play button, the small little triangle button, and you are there connected, ready to broadcast so people can hear and hear what you're saying and uh, playing. So that's kind of physical equipment, uh, using them in the most basic sense through an encoder, which simply takes all the audio running through that piece of kit at that specific time and broadcast it out. It's nothing fancy, nothing shiny, but hey, it gets you broadcasting in no time at all. And particularly with a desk like this, like the Rodecaster Pro 2 here, um, you can broadcast music through it. Um, the you, uh, the Bluetooth functionality that's built into it is perfect for that, getting callers on air or playing music from a smart device that you may have streaming something that you have saved onto your computer. So you can use this one piece of equipment for all of your broadcasting needs, or you may want to use something additionally, you know, alongside your USB microphone such as this. But that's the most basic way of broadcasting live, plugging in a bit of USB kit, using an encoder, nothing fancy, but you're live on air in no time at all. There's also an honorary mention for a little piece of software called Audio Hijack, which is just exclusively for a Mac. And that kind of almost like a, a spider's web, you can connect up loads of piping to take specific inputs from other software and other browser tabs and other things you might have open or plugged in. And it allows you to arguably have more control over specific inputs. So uh, it is a uh, cost. It's something that you do need to pay for. I forget the cost, maybe something like $40, something like that. Could be wrong, um, but that's a, a good piece of software to use, particularly if you are a Mac user as well. Now, another piece of software type uh, that you may be aware of is something called Playout Software. Now, this is specific software that's designed to store and play your content as part of a live broadcast. It still requires the need of a hosting platform like Radio.co because it can't broadcast out on its own, but you can use that play out piece of software to, as I say, control what is playing out, you know, so, you know, you can mix your music that's on there, you can store it, you can fire it off whenever you like. It just still needs to hook up to a hosting platform like Radio.co. Now, some of them actually allow you to hook up directly through to Radio.co without using anything else. So on your Radio.co account, in particular, you will have um, some connection details. It's your specific, unique information on the server that you're hosted on. And some platforms can actually connect to it directly, so you can broadcast that without using anything else. Or additionally, you may need to use the likes of BUT, you know, an encoder such as that to actually just be that middleman, that plugging in uh, element. Again, within the Playout um, software realm, there are different kinds, different levels of difficulty, let's say. But some of the more very basic ones are kind of like Radio DJ. It's pretty much kind of like creating a mere playlist uh, you know, you can automate it, schedule it whenever it's going out and broadcast everything through there into radio.co. Station playlist is another option, again, something that you may have heard of. Or if you want something, I like to say, a bit more traditionally radio in the sense of if you've ever worked on a, you know, a typical radio station where you might have uh, virtual hotkeys and, you know, you can see the timing of everything that's coming in, load up your tracks. Play It Live is very much like that. So that's a fantastic piece of software, Play It Live. We actually have a help guide on it to show you how it works. But that allows you to drag in tracks, but also drag in hotkeys that can fire off any time you like. 
And it, it's a bit hard to describe. I mean, you'll be seeing it on the screen anyway, but it's like a typical setup for a um, for, for a radio station uh, playout software. It kind of just gives you that aesthetic feel that you are doing a professional um, setup because as, as amazing as Radio.co is, it's often best to use an additional playout software adjacent to it just to give you that more freedom and creativity and control really over what you're playing. So uh, Play It Live is a fantastic option that just gives you lots of in-depth uh, options and opportunities to really, yeah, feel as if you're broadcasting and driving an actual real show. Now, another option is called DJ interfaces, or rather that's what I refer to them as. More often than not, these can resemble like a literally a digital set of DJ decks. So if you imagine just an actual physical piece of kit plugged into your computer, that condensed onto your screen is just as simple as that. Now, this allows you to, you know, kind of like drag tracks onto the, uh, the the disc spaces. Again, not being a DJ myself, I couldn't tell you the actual proper names of them, but drag the tracks into the places that they go. You can individually mix each track that you want in, adjust the levels of each one, fire off tracks over the top of each other, mix them together. It's honestly just like a virtual, virtual representation of what you might see DJs using physically. Um, again, just like before, this different say levels of difficulty and, and intricacy. So virtual DJ is probably one of the most well-known simple options. You know, it can be pretty user-friendly to work around. And that's literally just two decks. Uh, and then you just load up your tracks, fire it off, you know, store your tracks on there, load them up anytime you like. Uh, there is a free option available, but if you take the paid option, virtual DJ Pro, um, you can actually broadcast directly to radio.co through that without the need of using something like but so it makes things a bit more streamlined and simple. Um, and then advancing from that, there are two others that are quite popular uh, amongst the DJs that do broadcast with us, and we do get an awful lot. Uh, first of all, the Serato DJ, which I believe is just exclusive to Mac. Serato DJ is compatible with a lot of uh, DJ decks and mixers. So it's quite a versatile piece of software that gives you a very high-end, you know, very intricate but very um, just a, just impressive uh, ability to DJ live and mix live on air. And then there's also Tractor. Now, Tractor is probably considered one of the most professional ones, mainly because it is incredibly compatible with its own Tractor bits of kit. And Tractor may be a, a particular brand of DJ kits that you are uh, perhaps aware of. Um, and again, both of these, they can be paid for um, either as a, um, a subscription base, you no know, Serato is subscription based, um, a tractor, I think it's it's maybe something like uh, 50 to $100 or something like that for it. So as you can see, there will be something available to you to match your preferred style of broadcasting live. And at the very least, as I say, you could always just begin playing files that are stored on your computer using nothing but a simple USB microphone to speak into. Now, for more in-depth walkthroughs of any of the solutions I've covered, uh, please head to our blog or go to help.radio.co where you'll find specific tutorials on most of what I've discussed. So that's it for this video. So thank you very much for joining me. And if you feel you're now in a position where you reckon you could launch your radio station tomorrow or, hey, even later today, then perhaps you'd appreciate some handy tips on how to market your station, right? Uh, well, then I expect to see you in the next installment of our Radio.co Back to Basics series, where we will be covering just that, how to begin marketing and promoting your station so you can start growing your listeners. But hey, if you want to take a leap forward, why not activate your free seven-day trial today to begin working towards your official launch day imminently. That's it for me. All the best and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the Radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, Tutorials, help guides situated uh, around me. Or why not visit our website, radio.co, or even drop me an email, studio at radio.co. Until next time, take care and happy broadcasting.